شكرا وكم تو نيوز فان بحرين انترناشونال ام سارة بالفت His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued royal decree number 99 of 2021 abolishing the National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA. According to the decree, the Minister of Oil shall undertake all the functions carried out by NOGA as stipulated in the laws, regulations, decisions and regulations in the force in the kingdom. All the financial appropriations allocated for NOGA in the state budget and all its rights and obligations shall be transferred to the Ministry of Oil. All NOGA's employees shall also be transferred to the Oil Ministry with the rights and benefits in accordance with the organizational structure of the ministry. Any tax that contradicts the provisions of this decree shall be repealed. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree Number 100 of 2021, organizing the oil ministry as follows. The Minister of Oil shall be responsible for the Undersecretary of the Minister of Oil, who shall oversee the Directorate of Human and Financial Resources, the Directorate of International Relations and Cooperation, the Directorate of Control and Licensing, the Directorate of Policies and Security strategic planning. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree Law Number 25 of 2021. Article 1 stipulates that Law Number 10 of 2006, with respect to specifying the functions and powers of the National Oil and Gas Authority (NOGA), which was established as per Decree Number 63 of 2005, and the amendment of some provisions of Decree Law Number 42 of 1999 on the establishment of the Bahrain Petroleum Company (BAPCO), shall be renamed as Law 10 2006, with respect to specifying the functions and powers of the relevant oil and gas entities and amending some provisions of Decree Law No. 42 of 1999 on the establishment of the Bahrain Petroleum Company. Article 2, the phrase, the entity to be determined as per a decree shall replace the oil and gas authority mentioned in Article 1 and the phrase, the board of directors of the National Oil and Gas Authority and the National Oil and Gas Authority mentioned in Article 2 of Law 10, 2006. Article 3, the expression Article 2 of Decree Number 78 for the year 2005 with respect to the formation of the Board of Directors of the National Oil and Gas Authority and specifying its subjects and functions mentioned in Article 1 of Law Number 10 of 2006 shall be abrogated. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received City Head of Mina Cluster and CEO City UAE Elisar Farah Antonius and City Country Officer and Corporate Banking Head City Bahrain Michel Sawaya at Gudabia Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of further strengthening the role of the Kingdom's banking and finance sector, one of the key economic sectors that supports growth and attracts investment. He highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to enhancing facilities facilities that improve business opportunities and investments in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness welcomed Antonius to Bahrain, noting the Kingdom's long-standing partnership with Citibank. He wished Citibank's new global technology hub launched in cooperation with Tim Keen and the Bahrain Economic Development Board and success in achieving its goals, including providing quality opportunities in the banking and technology sector. For for her part, Antonio expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and noted his support for the Kingdom's enduring partnership with Citibank. The Chief Executive of the Bahrain Economic Development Board, Khaled Hamedan, also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the victory of CF Cordoba in the Spanish Second Division. He praised the efforts of the players and the staff and said that he is keen on supporting the team to achieve the objectives of the club. He added that the coming period will require additional efforts in order to garner more points as the club aims for promotion to the first light despite the fierce competition in the league. His Highness wish the club further success in the coming rounds. The Speaker and Chairperson of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division, Fawziya bint Abdullah Zainal, participated virtually in the 15th of the Speakers of the GCC Shura Council, the Council of Representatives, the Federal National Council and the National Assembly. She stressed the need to raise the level of support and aspirations of youth and achieving more progress for women as a major component of development in GCC countries, praising the progress achieved by Bahrain in that aspect, led by His Majesty the King and the 
the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and wife of the King, Her Royal Highness, the President of the Supreme Council for Women. She noted the need to establish a comprehensive legislative vision for GCC countries post-coronavirus pandemic with the focus on developments, security and stability in the region. The legislative and executive branches held a joint meeting chaired by the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Zainal, and the presence of the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Salah al Salah, a number of ministers and legislative authority members. The meeting reviewed plans and initiatives related to financial and economic recovery after the coronavirus pandemic. The government team stressed that Bahrain, in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, has patronized citizens' health in all stages of tackling the pandemic. The government team affirmed that the results achieved until February 2020 of the Fiscal Balance Program to achieve a balance between the government's expenditures and revenues exceeded the interim goal set. They added that due to the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic call for adopting initiatives to avoid any direct impact on citizens. The government team reviewed several options to deal with the requirements of the next stage in order to maintain social support for eligible citizens while adjusting the rate of the value added tax the VAT. For her part, the Representative Council Speaker praised constructive cooperation between the legislative branch and affirmed the pioneering measures taken by the Kingdom to handle the repercussions of the global spread of COVID-19, protect the health and safety of citizens and residents. For her part, the Shura Council Chairman commended the professional performance and tremendous efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to work out programs to support the national economy and back different sectors. For for his part, the Minister of Finance and National Economy affirmed the government's adherence to the principles adopted in achieving the goals of the Fiscal Balance Program. He stressed that priority in the next phase will be given to the importance of the national economic recovery through implementation of initiatives that are consistent with the current requirements. The Prime Minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett, received the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelif bin Rashid Zayani, and the UAE Minister of State at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Khalifa Shaheen El Marar, on the sidelines of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. The meeting discussed relations between Bahrain and the UAE with Israel and advanced level they have reached. The Finance and National Economy Minister Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa held a meeting with Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI Chairman Samir Abdullah Nas. The meeting was attended by the Labour and Social Development Minister Jamil Hamedan and Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister Zaid Zayani. The minister hailed the BCCI's role and contributions to national development. He underlined the need to pursue dedicated efforts to support the national economy and the private sector, spur growth, and create jobs for citizens. He said said that the stimulated package which was launched by the government contributed to maintaining development projects and programs supporting sustainable growth and mitigating the impact of the pandemic on the private sector and citizens. He added that the plans and initiatives aimed to achieve economic and financial recovery required in the coming period all concerted efforts to mitigate the impact of the pandemic and achieve the goals of the fiscal balance program by 2024. BCCI chairman said that the trading and investment environment is ready to recover the pre-pandemic rates of economic growth, stressing the crucial importance of supporting the fiscal balance program to achieve its goals by 2024. The Finance and National Economy Minister Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa held a remote meeting with editors-in-chief of local newspapers during which he highlighted Bahrain's successes in combating the novel coronavirus. He said that the priority was given to national and citizens' interests, adding that all resources were harnessed to support efforts to mitigate the pandemic in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, supported by the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, 
Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He stressed the importance of mustering all efforts to deal with the pandemic fallout, achieve economic recovery, and meet aspirations that would benefit citizens and economic sectors and attain the goals of the fiscal balance program by 2024. He stressed the need to adopt the best option that would have the least impact on citizens, particularly low income segments. He stressed the keenness on exempting 94 food commodities from the value added tax, in addition to 1,400 governmental services. The minister commended the positive cooperation with the legislative branch, hailing the role of the national press, which represents an indispensable partner in ensuring the success of national projects. The Minister of Information Ali bin Mohammed al ramehi participated in the International Government Communications Forum organized by the Sharjah Government Media Bureau. The session was attended by Deputy Ruler of Sharjah, Sheikh Ahmed bin Sultan al Qasimi, the founder and trustee of the King Faisal Foundation and chairman of the King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies, Prince Turki al Faisal, Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abu al Ghaid, and GCC Secretary General Dr. Naif Falah al Hajraf. The minister said that social media has become an important tool in spreading awareness and a powerful weapon in responding to misinformation. He highlighted the importance of engaging with the youth and cited Bahrain's successful experience in confronting the coronavirus pandemic through the efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The investment arm of the Hope Fund held a press conference chaired by the Minister of Youth and Sports, Ayman al muayyad where it's uh, it where the selection of 10 promising business people was announced to present their ideas to a committee of big investors in order to secure funding. The minister praised the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa for the fund and the youth in order to ensure the development of the kingdom's talent in a competitive environment. Huawei as an ICT company, we want to support more youth people, get more knowledge and support their career to development in the kingdom, to support kingdom's social economic better and better. We, uh, we are very happy to fund the program, B-Bank program with uh, Hope Venture to boost this program to uh, 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 initiate this uh, support Bahraini people uh, start this uh, program. Uh, hope all the participate all the best. Thank you very much.